Uh -huh. Right, hello Darren, <laughs> welcome to the club. Um, our first interview, uh, introducing you to all the supporters that couldn't make the members meeting. Yeah. Um, I've been scrolling through the internet looking for Darren Purse. Don't, don't believe what it says on the internet. Well, I'll tell you what, I was looking for scandal, controversy, nothing. I don't, I don't, I said nothing. I scrolled down, I scrolled down it for Darren Purse fallouts, Darren Purse rows, Darren Purse discipline. Uh, nothing. Apparently, the only thing that comes out is Darren Purse nutter, and it's one of his tackles. That's the only thing that usually comes I didn't up. Put that in. Um, there you go. <laughs> the only thing That's that come good. up, the only thing that come up is you got sent off a couple of weeks before a cup final. Yeah, and even then that got rescinded. So, yeah. like, so you can't even get you on that. Even if that got rescinded, it's the Welsh FA for you, mate. Yeah. <laughs> right now, obviously you've you've played an elite level of football, right at the top, mm -hmm. and that's where we've got a bit of compatibility here because I'm a driver, a black cab driver. Yeah. I'm also I can't go. I couldn't go any higher either. Yeah. So I'm being an elite yeah, driver. Yeah. Hey, listen, you, you, you've got the most, <laughs> utmost, utmost respect and the knowledge of that. It's yeah. unbelievable. Yeah, so we both elite performers here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, looking at your record, you've had £2.3 million pounds paid for you. Yeah. I can't say any black cab driver would own up to ever taking £2.3 million. Pounds. I didn't see any but of it, though. It wouldn't be checks or going through the books anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was the biggest transfer fee that was paid for you? Um, I, I think a couple of times. I think when I went from uh, Oxford to Birmingham, uh, I think they paid an issue of 800 grand. And I think after, after appearance, they, they had to pay an extra 200. So it came up to a million. And I think similar when I went from Birmingham to West Brom, I think it was the same. I think they paid about 800 grand. And then uh, went from there, then from West Brom to, to Cardiff, I think it was three quarters of a million pounds. So. Yeah, but we're talking yeah. about early 2000s. So yeah, yeah. So this, it, was, it was a little bit of money. but. Um, I was I was a youngster coming through and, yeah. Um, yeah, and they decided that was how much they wanted to pay for me. So it worked out. It was brilliant, brilliant moves for me. To be fair. Yeah. Now you was born in Stepney. Yep. Fourteenth of February. Yeah. Very romantic. Very Valentine's Day. Yeah. yeah. You have yeah. to ask my missus about that. <laughs> um, what was your first memories of football? I mean, who? Uh, first I, I, memories. Talk about as a kid. As a kid, uh, when I was about six, seven years of age, I played for a little team called St Matthews out of Bethnal Green. Um, I was a centre forward, used to score loads of goals. I was just quicker, bigger than everybody else. Yeah. So I played for them for a few years. Then I went and signed for Simrab, uh, which I think a lot of people know. It's yeah. a big, big football club in uh, in London for bringing kids through. JJ, what's his name, KD? Uh, John Terry, John and Terry. People like that. Uh, Ledley King Ledley. was another one. Yeah. Uh, but me and Lee Bowe were in the same, the same team. So uh, but you was there before them. So they actually came into it. I want to be like Darren Purse because he's gone. Well, into I, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> but he was always, he always had a really good reputation going yeah. forward, winning cups and trophies and all that at, at a young age. So it was uh, sort of bred into me. And then got to about 14 years of age, obviously still playing for them. Went around and did all the London clubs, Arsenal, Tottenham, and all yeah. that sort of stuff. Um, and Leighton Orient turned me into centre half at 15, which was probably the best decision of of, of my career, to be fair. And that was your first contact yeah, with that, regular professional. Well, I, I, as I said, I did the rounds. I, did, I did, went and trained at Millwall, went and trained at Arsenal, played for South East Counties football and all that sort of stuff. And as I got to 15, 16, I was going to start at school at 16. Um, I was quite bright back then. Um, doing the A levels, but Orient said if you come in and train with us, we'll um, we'll sign you on as a professional at 17 years of age. So I went in, trained for a few months, played reserve team games, um, and 17 side professionally, and made my debut three days later. So Fantastic. it was uh, perfect. Dream come true. Yeah, it, it was yeah. just it, it was just a perfect way to do it. And if you could write the script, that was how you do it. So it was uh, it was all good. Wonderful. Um, you answer the next question. Your first ever club, Leighton Orient. Yep. Um, you moved on there, you've mentioned a few clubs that you've played for, but well, you're well known to have played for Birmingham, West Brom, Sheffield Wednesday. Yeah. But you also played for England under 21s. Yeah. Twice, was it? Um, but they, it says twice, but I played four four games. We played in okay. the uh, Toulon tournament before right. the France World Cup in 1998. Yeah. So and obviously our under twenties have just won the Toulon tournament, haven't they? So yeah, um, yeah so played against so played against uh, obviously South Africa, France, Argentina. Um, it was just a great experience. And I know obviously I've done some 
really good things in football. But I, I'd still say that's probably the proudest moment of Absolutely. my football career to sing the national anthem yeah. in front of sort of I think it's ten, twelve thousand people in the crowds that were the, the stadiums we was playing in was was unbelievable. So uh, yeah, very proud to do that and just disappointed I could obviously make it to a full England cap. I've, I think I got in a couple of provisional squads when I was back in the Birmingham Premier League days, but yeah. it didn't quite happen. Certainly, certainly goosebump memories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but of course, you know, not, not making it up into the full international squad. Who did you have in front there? You had Sol Campbell, John Terry. Yeah, we have Sol Campbell. So, what did yeah. they, they mean? Huh? Didn't quite a, <laughs> quite a steam company. So to actually get mentioned about it was, uh, was, was, was quite nice, you know, yeah. when, uh, when I was obviously back in the Premier League back in them days. But yeah, there's some great players and privilege to play against some of them, do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, back on the memories of people you played against, it's, uh, they're fantastic. So. Yeah, it's no mean feat being, like I said, top of your trade. It, yeah, it's, you, it's, I'm, I'm it's proud rare. of it. You know? yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And which club, out of all the clubs, there's a long list here, um, who's your favourite club you played for? Um, on the pitch, Birmingham. Mm -hmm. um, because obviously got promoted to the Premier League and everything like that. It was, it was a great experience, played in a cup final for them. Um, and had eight good years, probably that played the, the majority of my games in my career there. So that was uh, that was brilliant. But I think sort of from a sort of family background, for my kids and, and sort of as a club, I, I love playing for Cardiff. That was uh, yeah. the area to live down there was lovely, and uh, so I spent four really good years there and loved every minute of it. So Birmingham and Cardiff are probably the two times, but they're probably the two clubs I spent the longest out as well. Yeah. So probably why I. So I good memories of it all. Yeah. But I, I, I still, I still look out for all the clubs. Captain Sheffield Wednesday as well. I, I, I captained every single car I paid for, apart from one, and that was Millwall, which was my boy on club. So <laughs> disappointed about that. And you but, supported uh, Millwall as well, didn't so you? Yeah, so I'm, I'm Millwall, Millwall fan. Didn't put you so. off football or anything? No, yeah, was, <laughs> I learned everything I knew from watching Terry Earlock and things like that place. So, uh. um, okay, your favourite ground? Which is your ground uh, you played at, not the home ground? Some good ones. I, it's a typical Q and A sort of question. Yeah, I, I, I've, obviously you look at some of the games sort of played at Wembley and like the Millennium Stadium in Cup Finals. Then yeah, but actual league ground, love playing at Tottenham. Um, I think that you always remember the games you play well at. Do you know what I mean? I think we went to Tottenham in the World Cup away and won three one. So sort of, that was that was a great memory. Um, yeah, so Carrow Road was always a nice ground to play at as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd be like that to play them. Pretty yeah, much Hot, well. Highbury was super. Yeah, again, you know, compact ground. Yeah, compact, yeah. sort of the yeah. atmosphere's there. Yeah. Nowadays, the bigger ones, obviously, I'll play at the Etihad. It's they just lose that, that, that little bit of atmosphere of the old grounds, but at the end of the day, money talks, and that's why they call them. Yeah. I've seen some YouTube clips of you, and I could guess what the answer to this is the most memorable moment you um, not England under 21. Yeah, but, but scoring, a, scoring a cup final, scoring a cup final is every kid's dream. Yeah. And I've been lucky enough to, to do that. And scoring in the last minute of a cup final Injury well, time. <laughs> is, uh, was fantastic. Yeah. Everybody, it's probably the first question everybody asked me is, was you nervous? And no, it's, it's what you're paid to do. It's all taken. Yeah, and that's, yeah. What, that's what you do. You, you, you're yeah. paid to do it. And um, yeah, it was, it, it was a great experience. Scored in the, in the penalty shootout at the end of it. It's just disappointing to lose. You know, yeah. Because. On the day, I thought we deserved to beat Liverpool, but it's just a shame. Yeah, as a United man, I remember rooting for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think we had most of the country yeah. on our side that day, but uh, it wasn't to be. Now you've dropped down to the non-league <coughs> non level. I know you're doing your badges as well. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I've, I've been quite lucky with my badges. When I was at Cardiff, I did my B licence and my A licence. I've, I've had my A licence for place, sort of six, seven years. Yeah. Um, I ain't really done that much with it, if you know what I mean. Sort of, Coaching wise, obviously it's my day job now what I do, but um, yeah, so I've had him for, for a few years, but I still enjoy playing. And I, as much as I love the coaching as well, I love playing more. And while I still play, I want to try and carry on. Super. And aspirations, like you said, you want to enjoy it, but do you want to progress? Do you want to use Oh, yeah, I want, to be, I want to be a manager. Yeah. Simple. It's, it's something that people have always asked me from probably mid to late 20s. But I, I can see you being a good manager when you finish playing. Um, hence why I went and did my badges and tried to do it. Um, I think you need to go and do your apprenticeship again. Um, I know it's not probably a nice thing for Enfield, but this, this is me doing my apprenticeship. Absolutely. You know, and oh, I've got aspirations of going higher, um, and hopefully we can go and do it together and, and build that platform to, to do it. Now, being a person who sticks my nose into everything, there's nothing more than a board would love to see them being used as a ladder yeah. and someone going on to 
elite. Yeah, no, no, listen, know, if it works out, it'd be brilliant for yeah. me. You know what I mean? I think it'd be it'd probably raise the profile of the club yeah, as well. Absolutely. So um, yeah, it'd be nice. But at the minute, I'm I'm just concentrating on the, right. getting the squad together for the uh, for the league coming up. The league yeah. Four questions here um, about personal views of the game. Uh, simple questions, mm -hmm. and then we go on to some personal questions yeah. of your, your own favourites. Right, Sinbin. Yeah. Yes or no? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you would say put yeah, some. Yeah, third, I, I, I think they're bringing it into the, the sort of a couple of the under 18 leagues okay. next year. Um, for foul abusive language, yeah, Sinbin. Yeah. Uh, 10 minutes. For descent, kick yeah. the ball, all that, Sinbin, 10 minutes. Fair yellow cards for missed time tackles of that. I don't know if it will work, but I, I, I think it's something that should be trialled at least. Yeah, yeah. I was, was going to say that orange card. You got a yellow and a red one. Is there room for an orange one? Possibly. The thing is, if it, if you get if you're through one on one on, on goal and you to bring somebody down, it's a yellow card. Then you don't get the benefit as, as a side that you're playing against. So maybe if they did bring another card in that. If you deny the goal scoring opportunity and it's not a penalty or anything like that, then you go into a simbling or something for 10 yeah. to 15 minutes. Maybe. It might be something to think about. But I don't want, I don't like messing with the game too much. Yeah. You know, it's um, the game's good as it is. Yep. Yeah. TV referrals? Um, I think it slows the game down. Uh, you look at rugby yeah. and all that sort of stuff. I think the goal line technology we've got is good because it's just a buzzer, the game carries on. If it's yeah. gone over the line, the referee knows about it. But I, I just don't think you can take the... Was it was it not a penalty? Human error. Yeah. It's human error, you know? Most, most, every referee I know, they don't go on the pitch to make mistakes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Even I got sent off for calling the referee something that I shouldn't have done last yeah. year. They, 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 all try, they only see the game as what they, see, as, as what they see it. So, yeah, why mess with it too much? Let them make the decision. Yeah. And, and post-match punishment for divers? Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah? Yeah. I agree with that, That's but it's, it's a grey area. I think if, even if even if there's the slightest bit of contact and you go down, you watch what it's like playing nowadays. How quick the game is. If there's the slightest bit of contact, you will go down more often than not. Whether or not it is a penalty or not is another is the referee's interpretation. But sometimes, if there is contact, you can't give somebody sort of retrospective punishment afterwards because you don't know. They, it might have been their standing foot that's, that's been brought down and that's why they've gone down. Because yeah. the game is so quick, players are so quick nowadays. So, yeah, it is a grey area. But, yeah, yeah if, if, if somebody's legitimately Latently. died with no contact, yeah. yeah, definitely. Right. Players you've played against. Yep. Have you played against Ronaldo? No. Gerard. <coughs> yep. It's cut on, isn't it? At least, uh, at least a cup final. Cup final, um, we played against the Carling Cup and I played against him for um, West Brom against Liverpool as well. And we got beat 5 0 at home and he was unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, Class of 92? Uh, yeah, most of them. Yeah. Most of them. Paul Gascoigne? Uh, I never played against Gazzo. I don't think. If, if I did, it would have been sort of, early, sort of 18, 19 years of age and I can't remember it. So. Right. Uh, Frank Lampard? Yeah, Frank. I, I, me and Frank grew up together playing against each other. I played for Simba, he played for Heath Park, so we've known each other since we were sort of 10, 11. So um, I wouldn't say no each other, it's not, we're not sort of phoning each other or anything like that, but yeah. we see him in the street, we say hello. Of course. So we've known each other for a few years. And have you met Fergie? Um, I have met Sir Alex Ferguson, yeah. yeah on a handshake? Yeah, just know. a handshake, said hello, that was it, but I've never sat down and had an in depth yes. conversation with him. But, yeah, yeah, same here, same here. He's, uh, Exactly. Outside See, St Pancras we're, Hotel. We're, we're not that far <laughs> apart, are we? <laughs> uh, Sir Bobby? Uh, yeah, so, uh, both Sir Bobby Charlton and Sir Bobby Robson. Oh, that's the next one, Bobby yeah. Robson as well. Yeah, both of them met yeah. then. Royalty? No, not yet. No? Um, not, not yet. No, we see. No. See, I'll make the Duchess of Kent today. Yeah, I was yeah. just trying to think how far down the uh, the pecking order royalty goes, but to be fair, that would probably be I'm a real royalist, so yeah, I think that would be my ultimate person to meet is the Queen. I think. Yeah, absolutely. Right, now a few personal questions. Your preferences, yeah? No, no shirt unit? Yeah. Beer or lager? What's the difference? Well, I prefer lager. Bitter or lager? No, I prefer lager. Yeah. yeah. And there'll be some supporters in the bar who, who want to know, do you put lime in your... But in your no, no, no. Thank no, goodness listen, if it's a soul or something like that, oh, I'll steady. stick a bit of lime in the, you, you, Not, you, you, not you, you, lime cordial. Well, you go down in a couple of their estimations if you admit to putting lime in your lager. Uh, lime in the top of it. It's, it's <laughs> built to do it. Soul and, and, and drinks like that. But 
Yeah, right. I prefer a lager. Yeah. Right, red or brown sauce? Uh, red, I would say. Yeah. Cinema or theatre? Uh, theatre. Black Cab or Uber? Oh, totally Black Cab. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Des Lynan or Gary Lineker? Gary Lineker. Uh, Ronaldo or Messi? I'm a Ronaldo fan. Champions League or European Cup? Uh, Format. Champions League. Um, bum, bum, bum. Trevor Francis or Dave Jones? Oh, as a manager? Yeah. That's, that's a tough one. I don't know what to say. They've both, they both got their pluses, both got their They're both very good managers, you know what I mean? Um, but, yeah, I don't want to say. They're both Ooh. very good managers. <laughs> good. No, no, do you know what? I'd probably call them Pickham. I could probably, yeah, fair Dave Jones was a, probably a better. Um, Motivator, man it's to the man, best that I'd do to stuff. put you in a difficult but position. <laughs> Trevor Francis was a was a brilliant player, and to be fair, to at Birmingham, he, he, did, he did superb to, yeah. to take the club from League One up to nine and getting into the Premier League. So yeah, they're both very good managers. Swansea or Villa? <laughs> I'm not saying that either. Blues fans and Cardiff fans are going to be watching this. <laughs> Turning their grave. That's like saying to me about West Ham being a mere Wolf fan. Oh, no chance. Did you know the next question? Well, listen, I'm definitely not answering that one. What's it, West Ham or Chelsea? Oh, Chelsea, we're missing the Chelsea fans. I've got to say with them. Oh, get away with that. Oh, two unanswered questions. Darren, thanks for the chat. No, thanks for the time. No, Excellent. wonderful. So have a good season. Thank you. Cheers, boys.